So one thing that I will say about last night's debate is that Pete Buttigieg did not have a very good night. And I say that not because I think that he face-planted, but because he needed a really strong, solid showing in order to hopefully overperform the polls in Nevada. He needed to communicate to communities of color that he's sensitive to their needs. He needed to demonstrate to voters that he's not this vapid, corporate-talking point, thumb-pointing machine, and he didn't do that. And one thing that's also clear is that the other candidates increasingly, namely Bernie Sanders, Amy Klobuchar, uh, are fed up with Pete Buttigieg. And he's just, there's something about him that listening to him speak, like I have this visceral reaction. He just gets on my nerves in a way that no other politician ever has. And I think it's because he's just so fake. Everything is scripted, focus group driven. And he's just a smug little elitist shithead. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. And even though ideologically speaking, for what policies we know Pete Buttigieg supports, I think that I'd probably prefer Biden to him at this point because Pete Buttigieg is just, he's so, he's so hollow, like he stands for nothing. And he is willing to take on whatever policy. He'd become a Republican like that if it means he'd be able to get power. So, I mean, I just, I can't stand him. And I think that that's the sentiment for most normal people, and I try to ask individuals in my social circle who aren't as, you know, online as I am, who do don't follow politics as closely, about what they feel about Pete Buttigieg, and I kind of see the same thing. They're like, uh, they, there's just something about him that turns people off, and I think it's because he's so fucking fake. Now, he decided to be incredibly aggressive. He went after Bernie Sanders more than he usually does tonight, and all throughout the debate, as people are on that stage, dunking on Mike Bloomberg, you have Pete Buttigieg's team putting out tweets about Bernie Sanders, attacking Bernie Sanders. And what he did on this stage was just disgusting. He basically equated Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg and made it seem as if they're equally evil, albeit for different reasons. But what I loved is that Bernie Sanders put him in his place and it was so great to watch. We could wake up two weeks from today the day after Super Tuesday, and the only candidates left standing will be Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg, the two most polarizing figures on this stage. And most Americans don't see where they fit if they've got to choose between a socialist who thinks that capitalism is the root of all evil and a billionaire who thinks that money ought to be the, the root of all power. Let's put forward somebody who actually lives and works in a middle-class neighborhood in an industrial Midwestern city. Let's put forward somebody who's actually a Democrat. Look. <laughs> we shouldn't have to choose between one candidate who wants to burn this party down and another candidate who wants to buy this party out. Look, we can do better. Senator, Senator think, Sanders, you know, are you polarizing? If speaking to the needs and the pain of a long-neglected working class is polarizing, I think you got the wrong word. What we are trying finally to do is to give a voice to people who, after 45 years of work, are not making a nickel more than they did 45 years ago. We are giving a voice to people who are saying we are sick and tired of billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg seeing huge expansions of their wealth while a half a million people sleep out on the street tonight. And that's so what we are saying, Pete, is maybe it's a time for the working class of this country to have a little bit of power in Washington rather than your billionaire campaign contrib contributors. Hey, uh, all right, look, first of all, I know. <laughs> My campaign is fueled by hundreds of thousands of contributors. Including 46 to, billionaires. Among the hundreds of thousands of contributors. And look, we've got to unite this country to deal with these issues. You're not the only one who cares about the working class. Most Americans believe we need to empower workers. As a matter of fact, you're the one who is at war with the culinary union right here in Las Vegas. support than you have ever dreamed of. We, can we have the support of unions all across this Yeah, country. but the vision I'm putting forward has the support of the American people. Really? We can actually deliver health care without taking it away from anyone. We can actually empower workers and lift wages without further polarizing this country. And we can build a movement without having legions of our supporters online and in person. 
Yeah, so you're gonna get some extra rat emojis for that last comment, you smug little rat-faced fucker. This guy is just, he's insufferable, and that line about how we shouldn't have to choose between a candidate who wants to burn this party down and a candidate who wants to buy the party out, he was so proud of that line that immediately after he said it, his campaign tweeted out an image of his face with that quote. Brilliant. So brilliant. Bernie wants to burn the party down so much that he's running to be the nominee and that he's literally part of Senate Democratic Party leadership. Like, who do you think you are? Like, you have the most popular politician in America and you're accusing him of being equally as bad as a billionaire oligarch who's racist, transphobic, sexist. Like, that's, that's disgusting. That's morally reprehensible and it's so disingenuous that people are going to see that you're just attacking Bernie Sanders, not because there's this ideological disagreement between you and him, but because you're you're an opportunist. You just want to take down Bernie because you know he's a threat. He's a threat. He said it on stage. He knows that it could be Mike Bloomberg and Bernie Sanders remaining after Super Tuesday. So do we really want that to be the case? Um, I don't want Mike Bloomberg to be the last one standing, but if we truly want to beat Donald Trump, don't you think that the most popular politician in America who uh, you once claimed had courage, should be the nominee? Someone who can excite young voters? I mean, I'm actually surprised that he was asked during this debate if he's out of touch with his own generation, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes, because he doesn't represent what young people want. He is painfully out of touch, and if he were the nominee, he would get so thoroughly destroyed by Donald Trump, it wouldn't even be funny. But everything he said about Bernie, I think that Bernie Sanders rebutted with the perfect response. So Bernie Sanders um, said, what we're saying, Pete, is maybe it's time for the working class of this country to have a little bit more power in Washington rather than your billionaire campaign contributors. That was such a good burn, and that's going to land with people, because guess what? Most Americans believe that there's too much money in politics. They believe that rich people and elites have too much influence on our elections. So every time Bernie Sanders calls that out, you have less and less legitimacy. So if you want to step to Bernie Sanders, be prepared because you're going to get punched, metaphorically, of course. Now, Buttigieg responded by saying our campaign is fueled by hundreds of thousands of contributors. And Bernie chimed in and said, including 46 billionaires. So good. So Good. Now, he also attacked Bernie Sanders because his supporters allegedly attacked the Culinary Union. Now, I've talked about this on the show. I don't know what attacks they're talking about. Is it mean tweets? I don't know. Because I'm a very online person, so if the Culinary Union put out some type of anti-Medicare for All statement, I would have seen it likely and pushed back. But they just claimed out of nowhere that Sanders supporters are harassing them. Okay, well, if they're literally harassing you and doxing your members, then I absolutely unequivocally condemn that. But I have my doubts because it seems like when everyone in mainstream media and other Democrats are just suddenly condemning Bernie bros, it just seems a little fake. It seems like it's a narrative. It seems like it's a coordinated attack to take down the front runner. So, you know, call me crazy, call me conspiratorial, but I'm not buying this bullshit narrative. But when Pete Buttigieg claimed that, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters attacked members of the Culinary Union, Bernie Sanders responded by saying, I've got more union support than you've ever dreamed of. <laughs> Boom. Because guess what? Bernie has labor on his side. And you have a lot of opportunists in this race, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg, who are trying to jump on this issue to not just demonize Bernie Sanders, but to make it seem as if they care about labor, right? They care about unions, they care about workers. But that's false. Not a single union has endorsed Mayor Pete's Medicare for All Who Wanted in spite of the fact that he claimed that it has majority support. No, it doesn't have majority support. Medicare for All does. Has there been a single poll done asking voters about whether or not they favor Medicare for All Who Wanted? Unless he's suggesting, you know, public option but we want Medicare for all. So you're a liar, and he keeps lying, and the other Democrats do that uh, that too. Um, and we're going to get to healthcare, but I'm kind of circling around to it. And he lies about how Medicare for all will take away insurance. That is literally a lie, because you're getting insurance. Like, if you have insurance now, it will be replaced. You're not losing something. But for him to say this, it's just a bold-faced lie, 
And this is why people don't like Mayor Pete. This is why millennials and Zoomers don't like Mayor Pete. It's because they see right through him. He stands for nothing, and he's just trying to win by all means necessary, even if it means demonizing someone who he, you know, said he supported. Now, when it comes to the issue of healthcare, I do have a clip for you. Because I've been saying for literally months now that when it comes to this portion of the debate, even though Bernie Sanders, I think, has already persuaded Americans that Medicare for All is the way to go, he's really, you know, honed in on what he needs to say to convince people. One thing that's lacking, and it's severely lacking, is that Bernie Sanders never ties the uh, the industry, the private health insurance industry and big pharma and the contributions that they've given to the candidates on that stage. So if you explain why Pete Buttigieg is saying... I don't support Medicare for all any longer. Now I support Medicare for all who wants it. And you explain that he's been bought off. That is going to be a powerful, powerful statement. And it will register with every single voter and the rat will be exposed. Well, guess what? Bernie Sanders did that tonight and it was glorious. Somehow or another, Canada can provide universal health care to all their people, half the cost. UK can do it. France can do it. Germany can do it. All of Europe can do it. Gee whiz, somehow or another, we are the only major country on earth that can't do it. Why is that? And I'll tell you why. It's because last year, the healthcare industry made $100 billion in profits. Pharmaceutical industry, top six companies, $69 billion in profit. And those CEOs are contributing to Pete's campaign well, and other campaigns up right. here. Let's clear this so up. So maybe, right now, maybe it right. is finally time that we said as a nation, enough is enough. The function of a rational health care system is not to make the pharmaceutical industry and the drug companies rich. It is to provide health care to all people as a human right, Mr. not a privilege, Mr. Vice President, no premiums, no cocaine. Go, no deductibles. Let's go ahead. That is how you do it. Whenever we have this conversation, I think that Bernie Sanders has already said everything that he needs to say, and he's been so effective at, you know, fighting through the corporate propaganda, these lies about people losing their insurance and it costing a hundred trillion dollars, like all this bullshit. This is what's missing. This is what was missing. And now you have to say this every single time. But be more specific next time. A little bit of constructive criticism. Bring up the specific contributions. Bring up how these, you know, uh, billionaires in the health insurance industry are directly financing. Name them. Name Aetna. Name Cigna. Name their contributors. Because that is how voters are going to see why they're saying the way the things that they're saying about Medicare for all, why Pete is specifically, but this includes Amy and um, uh, Joe Biden as well, because we have private health insurance now. Like we don't like it. We hate it. In fact, we hate it. And, you know, you can't just keep talking at us saying how much we love our private health insurance plans when it's costing us tens of thousands every single year when we can't even use it like me because it's so fucking expensive. I don't know what my deductible is. It's like 6500 Can't use that, okay? So, um, yeah, this is what you need to do. And I, I just love this because Bernie Sanders, during this debate, he trapped a rat and it was what we all wanted to see. And frankly, what we needed to see after weeks of this smug little fucker claiming that, you know, polls show he's the best to take on Donald Trump, that he won Iowa. No, fuck you. You're a fraud. Go away forever. But unfortunately, after 2020, I'm sure he'll be back. I'm sure that, you know, in 2024 or 2028, he'll run again and that the Democratic Party establishment will, you know, never cease to shove him down our throats. But if we are loud enough in saying, fuck off Pete Buttigieg, maybe just maybe there's a chance that he'll go away, but uh, who knows? Beta male, not a beta male.